People often don't know that they have a septic system or if they do, they don't pay attention to it. And the only time they pay attention to it is if you're using the facilities and it backs up. Septic systems do a great job for the most part removing microorganisms. But despite that, some still are released to the environment. And to the extent that they travel and they move to a private well, or to a river and then someone drinks from that or goes swimming and swallows a little bit of water, a person can become ill. In general, there's a suggestion that anywhere from 10 to 18 percent of, of septic tanks, if you go out to look, are failing. The state of Michigan, as a public trustee, must protect both the surface and the groundwaters. Most of us living outside of cities in northern Michigan rely on private wells for water to drink, cook, and flush. And when we flush, or pour stuff down the drain, we rely on private septic tanks and dispersal fields to clean up our wastewater. Yes, your wastewater returns to flow with the groundwater that feeds rivers and lakes and maybe your neighbor's well. These days, most septic systems use double-chambered tanks to sort and digest waste before sending partly cleaned water to a constructed dispersal area underground. We rely on the good bacteria and air in this layer of gravel and natural soils to remove most of the bad stuff. Then what's left rejoins the groundwater flowing beneath our feet. Public health codes adopted by counties and local health departments regulate the design and installation of septic systems. Water policy specialist Dr. Granetta Tomasi says that's a good start. Once those new septic systems are installed, there is no requirement, no legal requirement to ever look at them again, ever. So they go in the ground and that's it. No one ever pays any attention to them again. And through our research, we discovered that most of these systems are expected to have a lifespan of about 25 to 30 years. And so if they're never being looked at again, how do we know if that lifespan is actually living out? Um, there's just no accounting for what happens to these things once they're installed. Environmental health official Eric Johnston says regular care of septic systems is necessary to keep them working properly. These systems can be damaged in lots of ways, including the invasion of tree roots. They can get into a system and they can plug up that gravel. They can plug up the pipes leading from the septic tank to the drain field. It can also get into the septic tank and grow back to the house and plug that up. So that's one way. If a septic tank is not properly uh, serviced, and we recommend every three to five years by a licensed septage hauler that comes in, opens them up, and pumps them out, those materials, the scum layer and sludge layer, they can build up to such a degree that they start to get siphoned out into the drain field. Those finer particles then uh, fill up those, uh, the, the interface between the gravel and the soil. The other way is if you hydraulically overload a system, you just give it too much water. Um, you know, we design it, like I said, for bedroom sizes, but if you're just overloading it and overloading and overloading it, it becomes a oxygen poor environment. It turns into an anaerobic situation and that whole process starts, starts to break down. Unlike other parts of your home, a failing septic system can cause harm to others beyond your property boundaries by polluting nearby waters and sometimes discharges from a septic system can actually make people sick. Dr. Joan Rose is a microbiologist and internationally recognized expert in wastewater. About five years ago, Rose led a team of researchers from Michigan State University using new DNA detection techniques to check for markers of human fecal waste in 64 river systems across Lower Michigan. Lo and behold, um, uh, clear trends emerged. One was the, um, this relationship between this human marker and the number of septic tanks. The more the human marker in a watershed, the more septic tanks. There was a relationship. It suggested to me that we had been underestimating the potential for on-site systems which are discharging to the soil, discharging perhaps to groundwater, to impact our surface waters. And we had underestimated that. 
One of my colleagues has done some uh, exceptional work in Wisconsin on viruses, Dr. Mark Bochart. He's been studying septic tanks and groundwater systems and viruses for quite some time. And he's found a relationship between septic tanks and kids getting sick. I'm the director of the Laboratory for Infectious Disease in the Environment. What we're interested in is fecal contamination of drinking water, groundwater, surface water uh, from fecal sources and how that might relate to human health outcomes. What we have seen in the studies we've done is that the greater the number of septic systems, whether they're failing or not, the more likely it is that people become ill. Well, septic systems do, for the most part, an excellent job of removing what needs to be removed, the nutrients in human fecal waste and the microorganisms. Um, the removal rate can differ by how old the septic system is, how it was designed, but probably the most important element is that the concentration of the microbes. So for example, when you have a norovirus in infection, for every gram of fecal material, you have about a trillion of those viruses in every gram. And let's say, let's say you've got a trillion, and the septic system is designed to remove 99% of that. Well, then you're left with you know, roughly 10 billion per gram. So if you start with a high number <laughs> with an infected person, even a 99% removal, you're still going to be left at the effluent end, what's released into underground. That's still going to be a high number. Norovirus is one of a large number of pathogens associated with human fecal material. Uh, norovirus is very nasty. It goes through the household, virtually 100% hit rate. If one of you in the house has got norovirus, just cancel your plans for a couple weeks because it's going to go around. Um, something like 10 viral particles is all it takes to get infected, and these have been associated with, you know, with, with contaminated water. Um, so most of us have heard about norovirus. Uh, as far as bacteria, there are many of them. The more common ones everyone has heard of, things like salmonella, shigella is another one that takes very few organisms, and these are things that could be found in fecal waste. Um, some of these organisms will cause a watery diarrhea because they like to infect the small intestine, but others like Salmonella, Shigella can cause more of a dysentery where it's a large bowel infection where you can get f more frequent uh, lower volume sort of diarrhea and even bloody. And these things can be deadly. There are an estimated 1.4 million septic systems across suburban and rural Michigan. If these septic systems present such serious concerns for water quality and public safety, you might think that state and local regulations would require owners to make sure they're working properly. Like the brake lights on our cars. Well, not necessarily. At the time I started this research, there were about 11 locations in the state of Michigan that also had on the books what they called time of transfer or point of sale inspection ordinances. So out of 80 plus counties, there were 11 or so that were actually the only places in Michigan that were looking at septic systems after they were initially installed. But the only time they ever looked at them was when uh, a property transfer happened. That's great and that's an important first step and we really support those ordinances because as we've researched them more closely, we find that they find things regularly when they do these inspections. Even in one of the state's most popular tourist areas celebrated for clean, clear lakes, there's only a patchwork of protection. While Benzie County requires septic system inspections when a property changes hands, neighboring Leelanau County doesn't and these two counties share a single health department. We tried about six years ago to get a countywide ordinance, and we had the Department of Health director there in front of the commissioners, and we were all there sort of standing in support of this movement, and it didn't happen. So that's when Leelanau Clean Water became um, a formed committee of the commission. It's actually now a separate board, a Leelanau Clean Water Board, and we are reacting to that commissioners not wanting to step up to the septic ordinance like we had in our neighboring county of Benzie. We tried it a second round and made a big deal out of it and uh, still no go. There was a close vote but no vote for the septic ordinance at the county level. So that's when I said, okay, 
If the county doesn't want to do this, then let's go township by township. Tricia Denton has organized education programs and pushed for septic system inspections in Leelanau County. Still, she gives county commissioners the benefit of the doubt. Um, the votes have been pretty split, and for lots of different reasons. Um, there was still question, I think, in the minds of some of the commissioners whether or not this was actually a public health issue and um, whether or not it was an issue that was significant enough that it re would uh, that a countywide ordinance would be the best way to address it. Um, there are questions remaining regarding whether this is something that would just impact people who live around lakes or along surface water. We think not, we being the League and most of the folks that have supported a uniform septic code have scientific evidence that shows otherwise, but that's still a big part of the public perception around it is that it's about water quality as far as uh, nutrients in the water, but there is evidence that it's a public health threat also to people's drinking water, to water wells and groundwater. Being smart about this and getting some traction on protecting our water is using a uh, uh, new technology called quantitative polymerase chain reaction or QPCR and that allows us to go and take water samples run it through a uh, system of DNA testing to look for the markers of the microbes that live in our human gut tract and be able to see if those markers are showing up in the water therefore definitively proving that we have s human sewage going into our, our surface water. So we did a study for the first time last year, comprised of about three lakes, and um, we did find out one thing, is that we can detect enteric bacteria, the, this human form of uh, bacteria that gets into the water from sewage. Ron Reimink was the leader of a team working for three Leelanau Lake associations looking for human biomarkers in the water. With Glen Lake, uh, Lime Lake, and Little Traverse Lake here in Leelanau County, uh, we uh, went around and tested water uh, sort of randomly, but every 500 feet, and we took water samples along with other, you know, depth of water, temperature, conductivity, and those sorts of things, and extracted the DNA, amplified the DNA with the qPCR uh, with a specific marker. It's called HF183. And that specific marker that we were amplifying is only found in bacteria that are found in the human gut. If that one particular one is present, then you know that somehow, some way, the human uh, enteric bacteria had entered the water. And what we found on each lake, actually, Glen, uh, Lyme, and Little Traverse, is there were, there were areas uh, with low levels of uh, HF183, or the human enteric bacteria. That markers of human sewage were found in relatively small lakes surrounded by septic systems is not surprising to experts like Dr. Borchardt. Well, my guess is if when you have a situation like that where you have high groundwater, um, a high septic system density, uh, my guess is if we were to take a look at your gut microbiome, all the neighbors share the microbiome because you're all drinking each other's fecal material. It's probably what's happening. So, and that's fine. You know, there's nothing wrong with drinking dilute poop, it's just that when it has a pathogen in it, that's when you end up with disease problems. I think septic tanks are a source of fecal pollution to smaller lakes and to our lake shore. We have too many of them. Climate has changed the way, you know, things drain on the land. And I think that we're probably adding a lot more, both nutrients and fecal bacteria and viruses to our waterways through septic tanks than we realize. So if septic systems present a pollution risk to the surface and groundwaters of the state, what is the owner's responsibility? The issue with septic and groundwater protection is really fundamental uh, for landowners to understand their responsibilities as stewards and to help protect this shared public trust resource. What is so unique about the public trust is this multi-generational responsibility for current and future generations. Because you want your kids to come up to that little cabin uh, or cottage on the lake and enjoy and, and have those incredible memories that you did. And 
I think there's an urgent need for the state to be thinking about protections statewide that would address the, the septic pollution throughout the state. But yeah, I can't believe someone could have a septic tank and field and not want to know how they work, not want to make sure they're working properly, and want to make sure they're not contaminating their own water table, which more than often would be just directly below their septic field and all their neighbors' septic field. And they, you know, in most situations, particularly the subdivision, would all share the same water table. So, um, yeah, I. I don't know why anyone would not want to, to know about these things <laughs> and to make sure that they're inspected on a regular basis and uh, doing their job.